from the Joy News Center. This is News at 8. Coming up in the headlines, Ghana marks World Day against child labor with emphasis on child laborers in domestic work. Meanwhile, Minister of State in charge of social and allied institutions says widespread poverty is making the strict enforcement of laws against child labor difficult. President Mahama leaves for the UK where he will also attend the G8 summit. Ghana Water Company, clueless about how more than 3 million Ghana cities in compensation due some landowners in Komate cannot be accounted for. In an offshore fisher folk in the western region accused their inland fishing counterparts of formulating false rumors about formalin use to cripple their business. All these plus showbiz and international news coming up. But then the hot issue also coming up. Tonight, Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister Mutala Mohammed in justifying the President's intervention in getting their U brothers back, said, quote, Some players are more important than others. Agree or disagree? And why? We'll read your comments during the bulletin. News at 8 with Israel Live. Now, very first story, the Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations is threatening action against NGOs. He says use slave-like images to extort money from international organizations and individuals. He told Parliament during a presentation on the occasion of World Day Against Child Labor today, such organizations will be dealt with. Ghana signed an MOU with the ILO in 2000 and was the first to ratify the UN Convention on Child Rights. Child labor, however, remains a problem a decade after, with new trends emerging. One such is the exploitation of children by some NGOs, taking advantage of the poverty afflicting some parents to expose their wars to all forms of danger. The others that are taking advantage of the prevalent child labor situation in Ghana and portraying negative and undesirable images about it. For these NGOs, go to the extent of portraying child labor with slave-like images about our children that permits them to exhaust, extort monies from institutions that are sympathetic to their narration. Mr. Speaker, the perpetrators of such unethical behavior will be fished out and dealt with according to our laws. Deputy Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Rachel Apo, also outlined steps her ministry has taken to ensure child labor is gradually eliminated. My ministry, in partnership with UNICEF, is formulating a national child protection policy to enhance the safety and security of our children. We intend to also strengthen the capacities of official handling, the social protection interventions, and the issue relating to child trafficking, Domestic violence, we are also looking forward to expanding the scope and the coverage of livelihood empowerment against poverty program, that is LEAP, for the poorest and vulnerable in the society. The first reading of the Plant Breeders Bill was also read today. Now children are still engaged in the worst forms of child labor in many parts of the Upper East region. According to Africa's Ghana, a child rights-centered non-governmental organization that has been working in the region towards eliminating child labor, the engagement of such children in mining, quarrying, large-scale farming and many other hazardous jobs is still widespread, especially in the Talency District. Upper East correspondent Albert Sorry has more. Country Director of Africa it's Ghana, Nicholas Kuma, in a speech read on his behalf by Richard Amwa, had the marking of the International Day Against Child Labor in Palugu on Wednesday, said, though child labor, according to statistics, is said to be declining in Ghana, his outfit is skeptical. The main reason being that most of our stakeholders have either relaxed or failed to do more to ensure that the general elimination of child labor and its worst forms we therefore wish to bring to attention to all here that the revealing challenges of teenage pregnancy is high. 
high incidence of child labor, high school dropout, culminating with the poor BEC results. Deputy Upper East Regional Minister Daniel Siame praised the NGO's work and pledged government support. We all know that even the case of Kaya Ye, countrywide, is seen to be pulling on our youth in this part of the country and pulling them to the urban centers. That is why for me, this program that seeks to showcase a situation where we should not be promoting child labor comes really at the right time. Some children who were previously rescued from child labor by Africans are now doing well in school and they also spoke to Joy News. I entreat the government to, to help liquidate child labor. Children in the region marked the day with quiz competitions, cultural performances and drama. The widespread poverty in society is making the strict enforcement of child rights and labor laws a tough challenge. Minister of State in charge of social and allied institutions, Comfort Donyo Kujo Ganza, explains the situation exposes many children often giving off as domestic helps to abuse simply because their parents are unable to cater for them. She's been speaking to join us on World Child Labor Day, which this year highlights the plight of child laborers in domestic work. The International Labour Organization says an estimated 10.5 million children worldwide, most of them underage, are working as domestic servants in homes, but in hazardous and sometimes slave-like conditions. In Ghana, child labour in urban areas includes street hawking, portraying of heavy loads, cart pushing, and working in eating places. Rural child labour also includes cattle and sheep shepherding, fishing, farming, as well as stone quarrying. Ghana has several laws that criminalize and prohibit worst forms of child labor. But the sector minister, Comfort Dunyo Kujogansa, says there are forces impeding the strict enforcement of such laws, especially in rural areas. This child labor issue, enforcing the law, it will help us. This is the poor parents who have send the child to somebody to go and work there. Then you arrested the, the, the couples who cannot even afford <laughs> even one, uh, 20 Ghana cities a day or 10 Ghana cities a day. How do you arrest and punish it? If we enforce the law, we are going to arrest all the poor women, poor parents, and those who arrest. So let us address the issue properly. According to her, creating opportunities for poor parents in rural communities is the only way to address the issue. Their main job, most of them, about 80% is farming. How are we equipping them so that they will be busy with their children? So let's rather establish these people in the rural communities. We will send them the social amenities, plus light electricity is there, the schools are there, the clinics are there, then the good roads, we are making sure they are getting it there. She says her recent water project in Wasakuse in the Ada East constituency, where she is the MP, is gradually transforming the lives of residents. According to her, refilling the Wasaku River has provided water which the people are now depending on for farming and other domestic chores. As a child who endured the same fate, she also had some advice for parents. I was given to an auntie who I went through hell before getting to this stage. So what I'm telling parents is make sure you have your children with you. Take care of your children yourself. You have a child and you have given it to somebody and the person will stand on his or her feet that if you don't finish this duty, you are not going to school. If you don't do it, you are not eating. If you don't do that, you are not going to sleep today. You are not supposed to step your foot in this house today. They are teaching that child how to be wicked. Children who suffer child labor are deprived of adequate education, health, playtime, basic freedom, in addition to their rights being violated. 
such deprivation is said to have a long-term effect on their lives in the future. In a related development, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, has questioned the effectiveness of several policies designed to protect children as it marks World Day Against Child Labor. The UN theme for the day is No to Child Labor and Domestic Work, from which Ghana has chosen the theme Take Action Now, No to Child Labor in Domestic Work. In a news release signed by the Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Joseph Wittal, he recalled uh, that during the same occasion in 2009-2010, the former Minister for Employment and Social Welfare, Stephen Amanokwa, indicated that child labor had been mainstreamed into the Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategy, GPRS2, by government. He further noted that the guidelines of the medium-term development plans of all ministries, departments, and agencies for adequate government support to implement interventions to effectively deal with the worst forms of child labor were in place and question whether all the policies are being fully implemented. The Commission called on government to expedite action on the social policy to give direction to the work of the Ministry of Labor and Employment and the new Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. The Elakno Group has handed over an electrification project to supply power to deprived communities not on the national grid. The project, funded by a 5 million euro grant from the Spanish government, will benefit 330 communities in 42 districts. The Spanish government in 2010 converted a 5 million euro credit facility into a grant with the goal of providing solar PV electricity to public institutions located in remote off-grid communities. The successful implementation of the project has led to the installation of 1,000 286 solar systems in 330 communities in 40 districts to aid education, health and security. It was very difficult, for example, to uh, post teachers to very remote places where there's no access to electricity. Uh, it has also helped health facilities in these areas. And very, very uh, uh, illnesses like CSM, uh, malaria, snake bites, that was something that was actually fatal in these communities because there was quite frankly no storage facilities for medicines that were very critical to be stored. With this program, we now have had a real reduction in some of these incidents. The Spanish ambassador to Ghana, Olga Gomez, expressed concern about maintenance of the solar panels. I want to take this opportunity also to uh, underline the importance of sustainability and maintenance. These systems have been uh, installed, but it is very important to think about the future and to think about the maintenance of all of these uh, solar systems. That's one of our concerns. The president of Electno Group expressed interest in collaborating with Ghana in the development of infrastructure as the country seeks to meet the Millennium Development Goals. The Ghana Water Company is unable to explain the lack of documentation on more than 3 million Ghana cities in compensation due landowners affected during the construction of the Barakesi Dam in Kumasi. Acting Managing Director of the Ghana Water Company, Godwin Dovlo, when he appeared before the sole commission on judgment debt on Wednesday, was also clueless about the whereabouts of the said amount. The amount which represents half of the compensation due the landowners had to be eventually paid off by government for the second time. Etonam Se reports. First to appear before the commission was the Land Valuation Division of the Lands Commission, represented by the Chief Valuer in charge of compensation schedule, Kwesi Benti Enchel. He admits some payments were made to the Land Commission, though not in full. The total documented compensation paid was 4,301,000 Ghana cities, 562.8 cities. Are you aware of any compensation payment to Barakesi and Wabi land owners? in respect of the development of the waterworks for the areas around Kumasi and its environs. My Lord, the office is aware of uh, payments to Barakesi, in respect of Barakesi. Owabi is a distinct and separate location from Barakesi, and we, ha we don't have any payments on that. And uh, valuation was pegged at four million 301,562.89. Are you aware of that amount? Not the amount that you mentioned. 
the office assessment was in the total of six million eight hundred and eighty two thousand five hundred and sixty Ghana cities at the time um, the equivalent of sixty eight billion eight hundred and twenty five million six hundred thousand two hundred and fifty old cities, 50% of what the ministry, I presume, may have negotiated on. The sole commissioner, in his quest to find answers, called the Bank of Ghana to clarify the payments and how it was made. The head of the domestic banking unit of the Bank of Ghana, Leslie Akong, explained payments were made in three parts and was routed through the Ghana Water Company. The first payment was... Um, made on 15th February 2008 yes and uh, it was for it was in the amount of 2150 781.43 50 percent of a total amount of total amount of 4301 562.82. The commission was directed to speak with the Ghana Water Company for answers to the missing 50% payment. The records available to me show that uh, a compensation totaling 4,301,562.89 Ghana cities has been paid in total. Yes. And uh, were these monies routed through you to the various claimants in respect of uh, the said uh, acquisition? Yes, my lord. The first payment of about 50% of the said amount was uh, paid to us, and we also in turn paid the land valuation board uh, that amount of uh, 2150000 1,781.43 Ghana cities. Then the records also available in the office show that uh, uh, subsequent payment also to the tune of the same 50% was paid uh, to the solicitor for the claimants in this case. But there is nothing here indicating such payments. There is no receipts here indicating that he received one million one fifty at a point in time and later received one million as final. There's nothing. What I have here is Ghana Water Company Limited. Then, then somebody called Haron Senior Adai, P box forty five ninety one Kumase. Then acknowledge that I received from Ghana Water Company Limited or the Republic of Ghana the sum of eight hundred and four thousand. 474 Ghana cities only. My Lord, I wouldn't know, but the only document I have here is from a letter from the solicitor claiming that he has received the money from Ghana Water Company. The commission intends to probe further until it finds answers to the missing money. The Food and Drugs Authority has started an exercise to monitor the effects of drugs given to patients in the various hospitals and clinics in the Upper West Region. The exercise, which is codenamed Pharmacovigilance, is aimed at raising awareness and increasing the number of reports made on counterfeit and substandard drugs to enable early signal generation. Officials of the FDA have schooled nurses at the Wa Urban Health Center on the exercise. 2005, the Food and Drugs Authority has reorganized, intensified, and extended its safety monitoring activities, otherwise known as pharmacovigilance, to cover all 10 regions in the country. Gordon Akurugu is the regional officer of the Food and Drugs Authority in the Upper West Region. It's part of your profession. I believe that if you give a drug to a patient, there's no results. We are not only interested in the advert reaction, we are also interested in therapeutic failure. You realize that these days there are so many drugs in the system. People are trying to make money out of us carelessly. So you can uh, make customers to do their procurement in so many ways. They can bring a drug and then you give out to a patient, hoping that, especially the vaccines, hoping that the vaccine you've given one vows will solve all your problems as you know. If you you witness with those our mothers or our fathers who are old nurses, they know that a drug that if I give it to a patient, it should work within an hour. You give that vaccine, you give that injection, it's not working. 
He said the exercise has so far yielded some desired results since it was started and appealed to nurses to help achieve it to the fullest. The one municipal nursing officer, Ali Alimata, thanked the officials for the education, promising they will do everything possible to make them achieve the purpose of the exercise. I think if uh, you are doing this frequently, maybe every quarter or half a year, you are able to meet health centers that have direct contact like us, it will help us, because it will keep us uh, more conversant with the feeling of the funds. We, we will not forget it if you continue with us. You see, insurance has introduced a lot of too many funds to fill, and so some of the things we overlook it because of the, the load on us. But as we begin to communicate often, uh, it, it, it will streamline our idea. Rafik Salam's report from Wa. The former. Now, the U.S. team of investigators going to help in unraveling the causes of fires, especially in our markets, have commenced work. Deputy Information Minister Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed says the U.S. investigators have already met with local investigators for briefing. Speaking at the daily media briefing at the presidency, the Deputy Information Minister could not confirm where the investigation will start from and when it will be over. Mutala Mohammed Mahava believes the collaboration between Ghana and U.S. investigators will speed up the process. He says government is not going to support only the Makala fire victims, but all who have been victims of fire breaks in our market. He went on further to say that government is working on compensating uh, victims of Kantamanto. Now we're taking a break, but before we do, uh, this, uh, we love our Facebook community, and I know we have ignored you for a while, but we love you so much that uh, we're coming back to you. And our Facebook community is growing. Uh, if you look at our page, our Facebook page, we have, what, 20,882 likes, and uh, about 1,863 people are talking about us right now. But the comment uh, we're soliciting from you tonight has to do with the Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister, Mutala Mohammed, he's justifying, he's justifying the President's intervention in getting the IU brothers back into the national squad. Says some players are more important than others. So do you agree or disagree? And uh, why? Uh, we'll be reading your comments. And already we have some 47 comments that have come up so far. I'll be going through some of them uh, much later in the bulletin. We're taking a break. We'll be back with more stories. Do stay tuned. Now, President Mahama left tonight for the United Kingdom at the invitation of Prime Minister David Cameron. Whilst in the UK, the President will meet with the British Foreign Secretary and deliver a lecture on Ghana's democratic gains, economic change and regional influence at the Royal Institute of International Affairs, also known as Chatham House. Briefing journalists at the Flagstaff House on the President's itinerary, Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister Mutala Mohammed said President Mahama will also meet the Ghanaian community. Now, still at the presidency, uh, the reacting to reports about the MPP considering bringing legal action against the president or remarks he made when he visited the NDC headquarters this week about the ongoing election petition, Mutala Mohammed downplayed suggestions the pronouncements will influence members of the bench hearing the petition. They will be influenced by any statement made by anybody. I believe even if the United, the UN Secretary General makes a statement with this, it can influence the, the decision. Maybe Akuto Ampo should come very clear. Maybe he died. I don't know. But to say that I think that he should just turn around. I guess Gloria Kufu sits by her left hand, his left hand side. He should turn around and ask her the statement she made, which was captured that captured their win. The case was prejudicial. The president saying that we are confident, and we are indeed confident that we have a solid case. We won the elections genuinely. In fact, the mandate given to the president was not determined by anybody. It was determined by the people of this country. Now, fisher folk in various coastal communities in the western region are accusing inshore fishermen of fabricating the recent rumor of the use of formalin for fish preservation by some of them. They are challenging the Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture as well as the various institutions who have conducted investigations into the matter to publish the outcome of the investigations because as far as they are concerned, they are just mere rumors to cripple the business of offshore fishermen. 
Uh, yes, a report by William Benjamin Peters from the Western Region. The news about using formalin, a toxic chemical for the preservation of corpses, as a preservative for fishes by some fishermen in the Western Region, precisely exim, came as shocking news to most Ghanaians. Fishermen in the Western Region are now operating at a loss, since their fishes are not patronized in other regions as it used to be. Fishmongers from the region are being denied their sales in various market centers across the country as well. Even though authorities tasked to conduct investigations into the matter are yet to come out with their findings, the fisher folks suspect the matter was fabricated by their colleagues in the inshore fishing sector to cripple their business. Meanwhile, the acting municipal fisheries officer for Exim, Samuel Eboy J, said they are yet to confirm the matter. Uh, yes, you are sitting the man, and you are there, you are there, William Benjamin Peters report from the Western Region. Up next, we bring you business news. Right, the Ghana Statistical Service has postponed the release of the rebase inflation rates. The service was expected to release the f inflation figures for January to May today, but says it is looking at doing that next Wednesday because of challenges in the process of gathering data from the field. This is the third time the Ghana Statistical Service has failed to release the figure, citing some difficulties. Acting government statistician Philomena Nyako tells Joy Business they are optimistic of releasing the figures next week, Wednesday. While inflation for the month of May has gone up marginally, the rate stood at 10.9%, three percentage points up from the April figure. The rate is the highest since May 2010. Philomena Nyaku noted the rate is the, the major drivers, I will say, were clothing and footwear. The acting government statistician predicted that the outlook for inflation will be good in July, August, as the country expects a bumper harvest. The MCA Minister of Information and Media Relations, Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, uh, who has featured quite a number of times in the bulletin tonight, has refuted suggestions President Mohammed's presence at the upcoming G8 meeting in London will not make any difference, as he would not make any contribution to what will be discussed. He noted the summit is not all about making statements, but the benefits that will come with the sideline meeting for the world leaders. He explained how Ghana benefited from President Kufour attending the 2008 G8 summit. It is not just about making a statement, it's about the sideline meetings. And I can tell you, President Kufu attended the GIT. I believe that Ghana benefited something from the GIT. He, he didn't necessarily need to make a statement. You know, these are the most powerful, if you like, economic-wise state in the world. And naturally, we live in a country where almost 50% of our budgets, in fact, are donor funded. To a very large extent, this almost 50% is coming from members of the GIT. It is economically wise that you have interactions, and more so when they want you to be there. It is not just about going there and making a statement, but what you have been able to negotiate, if you like, out of that. Also, the Bank of Ghana has commenced action to receive foreign currency from both local and foreign sources to cushion the economy as the city tumbles against the dollar. For a number of weeks now, the Ghana city has suffered considerable pressure at the hands of the dollar. Interbank trading among commercial banks is virtually halted due to what the banks say is a shortage of it's a shortage. Head of Treasury at the Bank of Ghana, Adam Sinino, could tell Strebiners, although the shortage has been caused by speculation, the regulator is on top of the situation.
And then Transport Minister Jifa Ativo says a committee will soon be set up to investigate allegations of the embezzlement of 2.5 million Ghana cities at Metro Mass Transit Service in the Western Region. Five members of staff have been dismissed, but were asked to refund only 520,000 Ghana cities of the amount. However, there is no information on how the remaining amount would be recovered. Reports from other regional offices of the company indicate widespread more practices that threaten the collapse of the service if government and other stakeholders do not act quickly. Transport Minister Jifa Tivo told your business her ministry is working on the issue. And then the grand draw for the multi-TV buy and win promotion was held this morning at the studios of multi-TV in Kokomilimli Accra. The draw, which was supervised by the National Lottery Authority, was held live on Bidjam, the flagship morning show of the Adum TV channel. Forty winners were drawn electronically out of the thousands of entries which became eligible after buying a multi-TV digit box and texting the serial numbers to a short code. Abigail Opoku Ajamang of the Ghana Police Service in the Volta region won the first prize of the brand new Brillant SFF. FSV Salon Car. Also present for the draw were representatives of all multi TV distributors, Strong Technologies, Syndicator Capital in Sumotex, as well as the sponsors SCL Technologies, Samsung, and GTP. Winners will be presented with their prizes in a special event which will be held on Wednesday, 19 June 2013. Next up, we bring you Smart Investment Tips. Right, and on sports tonight, uh, I'll be opening the sports and I'll bring in George later. But the story has to do with the Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister, Mutsala Mohammed. He has justified President Mohammed's decision to personally impress upon the Ayu brothers to return to the Black Stars. He said, the President, being the first gentleman of the land, can invite anyone who has any issue with government for an amicable settlement. Addressing the Flagstaff, journalists at the Flagstaff House, he explained some players are more important than others. Let's listen. I agree with you in one aspect that we need to treat all the players equal. But trust me, not all the players are equal. And let's get that very clear. Not all the players, even in your radio stations and, and media houses, not all of you are treated equal. Why is it that we don't argue that we're all journalists working in, let's say, Joy FM? We all ought to be treated equal. You know, if you want to treat them as human beings, you treat them. But where one of them or two of them have problems? We have Michaelisian who has the same problem. We have the U brothers who have the same problem. We have Prince Barton who has the same problem. And how lovely will it be if these players are in the national team? And if the president thinks that talking to them will bring them back? I don't think there is anything wrong with that. 
All right, so George now joins mm. me. And uh, already we have lots of comments coming up uh, on uh, social media, on Facebook. If you go to our uh, page, we have uh, 76 comments already right now. If you go to Facebook, I'll be coming to those comments pretty shortly. But right now, uh, George is in the studio with me. And I'm going to be asking him, George, how is this likely to play on the psyche of uh, the, the, the national squad? If there's this perception that... I mean, it's, it's something that... We know. Yeah. It's true. I mean, what you, what you, you really you, said you, is you, that do not, you do not have equals in any field, you know. But, in, but if, do if you, you talk about... Well, once it, you come out to say it, or once it, that it, pronouncement it, it, is made, it, it, how does that impact on the side? You know, it, it is problematic. In as much as, uh, you know, the information minister was probably trying to... Um, put a big stance on, on what the president said, was trying to say, uh, I want to give my backing to what the president has done. I think he went slightly overboard because this is not a statement that will be taken very lightly in the camp of the Black Stars. What we know is that every player has his own pedigree in whichever club you are in. But once you step into the national team, the Black Stars, you are all the same and everybody must be given the same treatment. And on the face of it, you want to say that, yes, because um, somebody does better, someone is a better striker, someone is a better midfielder, it doesn't go to say then that you have to get a special treatment. Now, coming from this man who's been in the ranks for a while, you want to feel that probably that is what has been going on, but I don't want to get to that point. It's, it's a very serious thing, and I'm not sure you know other members of the Black Stars will be very, very happy to hear this, because this is coming at a time when the EUs you know, had to meet the president before they decided to rescind their decision. And so this is a bit colored, and it's going in, and I tell you, if you want to pick up on this, say, hey, the, the, the I mean, issue, I say that you brothers are, the, you know, better see, the than issues. No. Quite controversial. Very, very right, controversial. Like actually, the, the comments are mm. going wild on uh, Facebook. Kaba Nelson Sip K says, please let's concentrate on winning this weekend's match and some of this reckless statement. Kofi Opon Chechekou says, he, he doesn't know what he's saying. We need word of togetherness and other vice versa in the team. Abu Bakar Siddiq says they should allow them to play. Uh, Aubrey uh, Katazin says, Ghana City, the value is the same. Evenofori uh, Tevez says, I agree. I disagree with the president of him meeting to convince the IU brothers to return. So, so you see the there, that, that's the subplot. Yeah. The subplot is that it's the, the, there's a division, really, and the fans are divided about this. Some feel that the president shouldn't have stepped in. But again, you want to look at the Black Stars and say that every national team, like the president is the head of the armed forces, the president is the head of every national team, and can decide to step in when he wants to step in. But when a statement comes out, you know, from a minister, okay. that, um, you know... Anyway, that's not the only issue in sports. Even though it's the biggest issue in sports. It's very sports, big. And uh, but you have other stories coming up. Obviously, we can talk about the local Black Stars, and a lot is going on over the local Black Stars. Let's quickly do that story uh, from the local Black Stars, and uh, we're getting yourselves ready for it. Remember they play the friendly against Ivory Coast. You're preparing for the Chan Championship over there. And we'll get ourselves ready uh, for that particular story. The local Black Stars are also getting themselves ready. And they defeated the Ivorian counterparts in a friendly, which was to prepare both sides for the upcoming Chan qualifiers. The Ivorians struck first in the game, played this evening at the Barbera Sports Stadium. But two goals from inform Ashkel striker Yakubu Mohamed and show the win for the stars. Coach Dow the Lutrod and his charges would head into the second leg of the fixture on Friday at the Lenkley Stadium before facing Benin in the Chan qualifier. So very, very interesting news there for the local black stars. They are getting themselves ready over there. And there's news as well. Messi and his father are actually being fined uh, for not paying you know, their dues in Barcelona. It's something that Messi has come out to say. It's a bit of a surprise to him and he hopes that all of this will be sorted out when he speaks to his advisors. That will be all for sports. I know that more of your comments will be coming through on that particular question. Is one. I'll be taking a closer look at that. My name is George Adijuna. Israel will join us with Showbiz. Do have a good night. All right, uh, we're going to bring you international news, but your comments are still coming in, and I'd like to run a few of them uh, by you. Look, my number says, what is important is unity and teamwork. Nana Okrobo, he says, this man cry, what's wrong with him? Will they play with four legs? And then he signs off with Mchu. And then uh, Mark Yawusu says, what kind of statement is that? From government, God help us. So those who brought in the World Cup qualification this far are not important, and he sighs. Of, uh, but in international news, a government appointed body says Kenya's MPs have agreed to drop the annual salary by about $45,000 to $75,000.
following a public outcry. The Salaries and Remuneration Commission, SRC, said the agreement was reached in fruitful talks with MPs. On Tuesday, protesters in the capital Nairobi denounced MPs as MPs who treated Parliament as a piggy bank. MPs voted for a $120,000 annual salary in May in defiance of the wishes of the SRC and President Uhuru Kenyatta. They argued they deserved the amount because they worked hard and gave financial help to their constituents. But the decision sparked national outrage as the MPs are among the highest paid in the world and the average income in Kenya is around $1,800 a year. The SRC said MPs agreed to the pay cut of nearly 40% after negotiating for themselves a one-off car grant of around $58,000. It was a more viable option than providing the 416 MPs with chauffeur-driven cars. The SRC added the MPs would also receive hefty pension benefits. MPs in the previous parliament awarded themselves a $107,000 retirement bonus in one of the last sessions before the election. And now the ex-CIA employee who leaked secret U.S. surveillance details has vowed in an interview to fight any attempt to extradite him from Hong Kong. Edward Snowden told the South China Morning Post he's neither traitor nor hero but an American. It is the first interview he has given since disappearing from his hotel room in Hong Kong on Monday to the revelations that the U.S. is systematically seizing vast amounts of phone and web data. He left Hawaii for Hong Kong shortly before the highly sensitive leaks surfaced. The information leaked by Snowden has undoubtedly angered the U.S. government, but so far, he has not been charged by the authorities, nor is he the subject of an extradition request. Hong Kong has an extradition treaty with the U.S., although analysts say any attempts to bring Snowden to America may take months and could be blocked by Beijing. The Post quoted Snowden as saying that he had several opportunities to leave Hong Kong, but that he would rather stay and fight the United States government in courts because he has faith in Hong Kong's rule of law. And that'll be all by way of international news. Sensational Ghanaian actress Jackie Appiah will be honored come the 30th of June this year. Jackie is among some 15 personalities to be honored at the Accra International Film Festival for their continuous contribution to the movie industry, especially in contemporary African cinema. Jackie Appiah's professional acting career began when she was cast as Enya Nambla Goji in the TV series Things We Do For Love. Following her on-screen debut, Jackie went on to create a successful acting career and today she has won numerous awards including a prestigious African Movie Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in 2007. Jackie will receive a meritorious award for her immense contribution to the movie industry and in contemporary African cinema at the Accra International Film Festival scheduled to come off from June 25th to June 30th. The five-day festival will also see Nigerian sexy actress Genevieve Energy also being honoured. Thirteen other people from Ghana, Burkina Faso, Nigeria and the United States who have done substantially well for cinema in Africa and the diaspora will be honoured at the festival. Top American film director, producer and actor Bill Duke will be in Ghana as a special guest for the occasion. That'll be all by way of uh, showbiz. All right, so we'll be linking up uh, pretty shortly with uh, PM Express, PM Express Studio and Ananza Kwa standing by. But I'll go to some of your Facebook comments, a few of them before I go. Uh, but I'd like to just make uh, this comment now. Nana Okufru Bo your name is quite a mouthful and uh, it's dangerous to the career of broadcasters so please on facebook you'd have to tweak uh, the names you watch the names you use but uh, this other comment that, that came in uh, says all are equal because before one can score he must be passed by a colleague to me saying this to the media is very sarcastic that's by samuel f uh, sammy d and uh, there's another comment. Uh, Jalil Awuni says it's a slip of tongue. He's supposed to say some players are good than others, but unity is more important. Uh, Ishau 
uh, Abdul Munmin says, true, some are to play in the qualifying while others play the tournament proper. And uh, there's uh, one other that says, um, I will also stop work so that the president will call me to the Flagstaff House and pamper me to go back to work. Uh, before we go, a quick run through our top stories. Ghana today marked world, the World Day Against Child Labour with emphasis on child labourers in domestic work. No other Minister of State in charge of social and allied institutions says widespread poverty is making the strict enforcement of laws against child labour difficult. President Mahama has left for the UK where he will also attend the G8 summit. The Ghana Water Company was clueless about how more than 3 million Ghana cities in compensation due some landowners in Kumasi cannot be accounted for. In an offshore fishing folk in the western region, have accused their inland fishing counterparts of formulating false rumors about formaling use to cripple their business. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Israel Light.